It's one of the most blatantly carnal songs of the rock era. Yet, it is ultimately a cautionary tale not to be fooled by your purient desires. The track was difficult to play, even for Bonzo, Percy, Lead Wallet, and Jonesy, the nicknames of one of the most influential group of musicians ever assembled. Uh, the story of a stray dog that captured the hearts and the title of a signature song of rock and roll royalty is so next on Professor of Rock. Hey music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you've ever camped uh, outside of a ticket vendor uh, to get the best seats for your favorite artist concert, you're gonna dig this channel. Make sure to subscribe below right now. Click the bell so that you never miss out on our daily content. You know, the way uh, we're able to keep this a daily channel is through your support on Patreon. Make sure if you haven't already, uh, click on the Patreon link. Uh, you can get more content there and also check out our merch. Uh, this again helps it to keep a daily channel and we appreciate that. We're going to get this feature started by waking up the army of guitars. That's the way the great Jimmy Page described the way he warmed up his guitar to open one of the greatest tracks of the rock era, Black Dog by Led Zeppelin. Hey, hey, mama said the way you move gonna make you sweat, gonna make you... Groove. The intro is a cross-cutting electronic tono that uh, Led Zeppelin engineer Andy Johns thought would sound really cool if they could pull it off. As stated in the 2018 book Led Zeppelin, all the songs... The experimental lead-in for Black Dog and the down and dirty guitar grind that embodies the track, that was a salute to Neil Young and Crazy Horse's Cinnamon Girl. The guitar work on Black Dog is just raw and messy, more indicative of early Zeppelin songs that transported you to a dark, smoky barroom where an unknown band played the best blues rock you'd ever heard. Page always uh, prioritized feel and emotion over pitch perfection. Jimmy's bends on the solo in Black Dog are noticeably sharp and he's ahead of the beat of the song several times during the main riff, which gives that section an aura of danger. He achieved that strange flavor by running his guitar through a Leslie speaker, producing a jolting effect, like the sudden arrival of an identified flying object into a clear blue sky. Black Dog, four minutes and 55 seconds of untamed rock and roll libido, was positioned as the first cut on the revered Led Zeppelin 4 LP, it was released in 1971. Now, the inception of Black Dog was birthed by bassist John Paul Jones, the great John Paul Jones, who should get a ton of credit for how this uh, classic song came to life. Jones uh, created the main score with uh, spinning riffs and tricky rhythm patterns. It wasn't John Paul's practice to write a complete musical arrangement for a Zeppelin track, but he did for Black Dog. Jones composed the music uh, after a band rehearsal at to Jimmy's house while riding on a train. His father, who was a pianist and arranger during the big band era, showed John a notation technique so his son could learn how to write on the fly. Now, Jones wrote the chord structure for Black Dog, apparently on the back of uh, his train ticket, which he regrettably discarded in a trash can. He drew his inspiration for Black Dog from Electric Mud, uh, the provocative 1968 album by Muddy Waters. I just want to make love to you. The blues rock track that Jones imagined would prove challenging even for the accomplished players of Led Zeppelin. Uh, Jones actually told then journalist Cameron Crowe, great director, uh, that uh, we wanted the song to turn back on itself. He showed the arrangement to his mates and they sort of fell into it. Hey, 
The crossing time signatures and the chaotic blending riffs that make up Black Dog were tough to nail down because the band was actually playing completely different patterns. It's exactly the way that Jones devised the arrangement. Now, the only consistent element of the song are uh, Robert Plant's vocal breaks. Theory circulated at the time claiming that uh, John Paul Jones intentionally made the arrangement as complicated as possible so that nobody would be able to cover it effectively. I love that. If only it were true. Uh, when a reporter from Australia's Triple M confronted Jones about that theory uh, during a special on Led Zeppelin, Jones responded by calling the whole thing uh, a myth. Nevertheless, the four band members struggled with the shifting time signatures that triple in one part and overlap. The band left it to drummer John Bonham to figure out to how to navigate through all the musical trickery and lay down a solid groove. Bonzo's solution was just to four-time the signatures as if there was no turnaround. Now, if you listen very carefully, you can hear Bonham quietly tapping his drumsticks together to keep time uh, when Plan is singing the verses. In addition to scripting the music uh, for Black Dog, John Paul Jones performed the rolling bass line that to spearhead of the track's lustful safari. He also used a pick while playing the bass parts on the track, uh, something else that he rarely did. When listening to Black Dog, uh, one is just devoured by Robert Plant's carnivorous vocal. So let's take a second right now to recognize our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. Uh, there are so many things that I love about Zenny. I get to choose my eyewear from so many colors, shapes, so many styles. But two things that always stand out for me. With Zenny's virtual 3D try-on, you get to shop from your couch and you see what every Zenny frame looks like on you before you buy. And they're so cost-effective. I mean, you can get two or three different pairs for what uh, one would cost you elsewhere. Check it out today at zenny.com. Okay, so back to Black Dog. Robert Plant's vocal is spectacular. Now, as I understand it, uh, Jimmy Page had the idea of incorporating a call and response seduction between the magnetic front man and the band. The starts and stops with Plant singing his swaggering a cappella in the verses. That was influenced by the Peter Green composition of Well. That's when Green was the lead singer and lead axe man for Fleetwood Mac in 1969. Well, I might not give the answers that you want me to. Plant's amazing vocal on Black Dog was recorded, and get this, two takes. The vocal booth that Plant sang in was a drawing room at the Headley Grange Mansion, which was set up by Andy Johns with egg crates covering the walls to soundproof the space. Now for his vocal on Black Dog, Robert Plant pushed his voice to the max, uh, transitioning between his soaring tenor and his screeching falsetto. I mean, in his prime, Robert Plant had an otherworldly ability to definitely mix and release his expansive register. His resonance and his versatility on Black Dog was one of his most magnificent performances in, you know, considering Zeppelin's supersonic catalog. That's really saying something. There is nothing subtle about the first half of Black Dog. How do I put this? Um... It's one of the most carnal songs of the rock era, in my opinion, but Robert Plant's lyricism poetically projects the primal urges of the narrator without being gratuitous or vulgar. That's really a testament to the convincing art of songwriting. I mean, consider verse two. I got a roll, can't stand still, got a flaming heart, can't get my fill. Can't stand still, got a flaming heart, can't get my fill. Eyes that shine, burning red dreams of you all through my head. However, there is actually more to Black Tog than just a woman's allure uh, driving a man crazy. Ultimately, the moral to the story of Black Dog is uh, be careful not to be blinded by your desires. 
or you might be taken advantage of by someone who wants to use you uh, for their own selfish needs of getting fame and fortune. He had uh, some experience there, I'm sure. The truth comes out, though, in verse 3, along with words of wisdom. Take too long, for I found out what people mean by down and out. I found out what people mean by down and out. Spent my money, took my car, started telling her friends she's going to be a star. I don't know, but I've been told a big-legged woman ain't got no soul. A song title, Black Dog, that was a reference to a black Labrador retriever that uh, wandered around the Headley Grange Mansion in Hampshire, England, uh, where the band was recording. Uh, no one knew the stray dog's name. They just called it Black Dog. It was a, a constant presence, as I understand it, uh, during the sessions over their two-month stay at the mansion, as if it were part of the band's entourage. Now, the lab disappeared one night, however, only to return the next morning and spent the whole day sleeping off whatever adventures it had been on the night before, which struck John Paul as being very funny. When it came time to name the track that Jones and the band were working on, they decided to call a Black Dog, uh, a heading that had nothing to do with the song's subject matter, but in a weird way, it fit the vibe of their stint uh, at Headley Range. Interestingly, uh, to go along with the mystery of the dog's name and how that uh, lab got there in the first place, the Headley Grange mansion was reportedly haunted. Uh, band members of Fleetwood Mac, uh, Genesis, uh, Bad Company, uh, and Led Zeppelin, they claimed to have had ghostly encounters while they recorded there. The Headley Grange mansion, that was built in 1795, and it had a very controversial history. As sad as it sounds, for decades, the mansion was used to shelter the unwanted or discarded, such as poor elderly orphans and illegitimate children. It was also a workhouse for the poor and insane and was ransacked by mad rioters in the 1820s. Many died on the premises, uh, which Bond tells of spirits lurking in the hallways. Plant and Bonham hated being in the house because of its uh, spooky, brooding atmosphere. Jimmy Page, on the other hand, <laughs> with his fascination for the occult, uh, he was intrigued by the mansion's sinister darkness. Page recounted uh, what happened to him on one particular night uh, when he was walking up the main stairs and he saw a great shape standing on the top of landing. He was convinced that the apparition was uh, not his imagination. Didn't surprise him to learn that other musicians had told of similar paranormal sightings. So many stories of the studio out there. I mean, you could probably have a show just based on that. <laughs> So Black Dog was not put out as a 45 in the UK, very typical of Zeppelin, but it was released as a single in the rest of the world, generating significant airplane sales. Black Dog charted the highest in Denmark, went to number five, and Norway went to number six. It hit the top 15 in Australia and Canada and New Zealand. In the US, the single peaked at just number 15 on the Billboard Hot 100. It was actually the band's second biggest hit in the United States. Their biggest hit in the U.S. Uh, was A Whole Lot of Love. That went to number four in 1969. Still so hard to believe that in the U.S., where Zepp had some of the biggest selling albums ever, they only had three top 20 hits, and they never had a number one song. But as is the case with many of Zeppelin's songs, uh, much bigger than their chart positions in the long run, especially. Downloads of Black Dog have been really strong since the dawning of the digital age. Uh, Black Dog has been in and out of the top 100 on the Billboard download chart since uh, 2007. Going back to their albums for just one moment, Zeppelin IV is currently the seventh biggest selling album in United States history. Uh, it's 24 times platinum. It's also the 12th biggest selling worldwide album with over 30 million sales. Some say even 37 million. It also contains uh, the life-changing song Stairway to Heaven, Battle of Evermore, Rock and Roll, and When the Levee Breaks, uh, along with Black Dog. The stairway. 
The album has uh, one of the most iconic covers ever. Instead of a title, Jimmy Page decided that each member should choose a personal emblem to be featured on the cover. At first, uh, he imagined a single symbol to be on the cover, but then he thought there could be four. You know, each band member would be able to choose their own. So Jimmy Page actually designed his own symbol and thus far has not revealed uh, really the reasoning behind it. There's uh, quite a few theories, a couple that uh, resonate with many people. First is that it represents a near-death experience to unify the living and the dead and uh, reveal the secrets of the universe. Another theory uh, comes from the book, The Collected Works, Volume 1 by Aleister Crowley, when a symbol was found that closely resembled the logo on one of the pages. Now, one time Jimmy Page told uh, Robert Plant the meaning behind it, but Plant said that he has forgotten it over time. The only time that I can recall that Jimmy Page shared anything about the meaning was something that he said in the 1994 interview where both he and uh, Robert Plant were being interviewed. As they were being interviewed, a member of the audience shouted out, to, what's your symbol mean, Jimmy? You know, And there was uh, a lot of confusion to what was being said, so Jimmy Page gave no explanation. We're still wondering exactly what it means. Many have said that the symbol appeared as early as uh, 1557 to represent Saturn sometimes referred to as Zoso, uh, but uh, Page has said it's not a word at all. Uh, maybe someday we'll know for sure. And John Paul Jones chose his symbol from Rudolf Koch's uh, Book of Signs. It's a single circle with three vesica piscus, meaning a person with both confidence and competence. John Bonham's symbol chose uh, three interlocking Boromine rings, which uh, came from the same book as John Paul Jones had. Apparently, it represents the triad of mother, father, and child. And this has since been confirmed by John's son. And uh, lastly, Robert Plant's symbol uh, of a feather in a circle was said to have been designed by Robert Plant himself. The pen with a circle around it uh, is the feather of Ma'at, who was an Egyptian goddess of justice and fairness. Plant would say that the symbol was derived from the sacred symbols of the ancient civilization, which existed more than 14,000 years ago. According to history, it's said that the remnants of civilization are the primitive statues of Easter Island. There's also a fifth smaller symbol chosen by guest vocalist Sandy Denny, representing her contribution to the Battle of Evermore. The figure is composed of three equilateral triangles, and it appears on the inner sleeve of the LP serving as an asterisk. I remember just being mesmerized by this album cover and the symbols as a, as a young child. My dad had the 8-track. I would just sit and stare at the small picture. I'm much smaller on an 8-track than a vinyl record, of course. I'd try to figure out the meaning behind it. Again, this was well before the internet. I would draw out the circles on my Trapper Keeper, and I'd listen intently to the 8-track and my dad's paint shop that he had where he would uh, listen to this album and many others as he was varnishing cabinets. I would try to pick up clues from the songs. I always remember when he'd pop it in, just hearing that blazing, magical sorcery of the first Robert Plant vocal on Black Dog and how it would just echo through that big shop that we were in. Hey! With such a mysterious and fascinating listen as a young, impressionable kid who just you know, was discovering rock and roll. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It was so different from the, the regular top 40 pop that I was experiencing from my FM AM radio. I used to love spending time in my dad's shop because he had all the heavy rock on eight tracks out there from Deep Purple to you know, Aerosmith to The Who, Led Zeppelin. It was just such an exhilarating experience. As one of Led Zeppelin's signature songs, it was only fitting that uh, Robert Plant and Jimmy Page performed an updated version of Black Dog on their 1995 No Quarter Tour. Plant also sampled Black Dog on his solo hit, Tall Cool One from the Now and Zen album that came out in 88. Such an enthralling listen, Black Dog. The four masters playing off each other. You know, that last 60 seconds is a ferocious, just mind-altering, take-no-prisoners, face-melting, soul-blast of pure 
rock and roll ecstasy. Leave us a comment about this Zeppelin classic. What are your memories of Zeppelin IV and Black Dog? What are your takes on the symbols of the album cover? Always like to talk about that. Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to check out our deep dive into Cashmere from Zeppelin. Uh, also subscribe below so you never miss out on our videos. We'd love to have you as part of our community. Make sure to check out our new merch as well as our Patreon so that we can keep the music alive. That's the idea. It's what this is all about. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Talk to you soon.